Fritz Erwin, the real cost of Meghan and Harry's pound 2.4 million refurbishment? Our goodwill. With her penchant for ancient electric heaters and Tupperware cereal boxes, the Queen has quite a reputation for being thrifty. Which makes it all the more astonishing that she has indulged what seems to be one of the most breathtaking examples of royal extravagance in recent times. How is it possible that Harry and Meghan have spent £2.4 million of taxpayers' money, with another £600,000 potentially in the pipeline, renovating a five-bedroom cottage? Of course, every grandparent wants to do their best to give the younger generation a leg up, but this is something else. It's not just the vast sums involved which, at a time when hospitals and other frontline services are having to make serious cutbacks, seems so out of touch with the challenges facing ordinary Britons. It's mostly the knowledge that the couple could, had they wanted to, have been accommodated in perfectly decent splendor at Kensington Palace in a 21-room apartment adjoining the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's. Say what you like about William and Kate, and the renovation of their own apartment 1A cost taxpayers £4.5 million, both are consummate corporate royals acutely aware of the obligations that their privilege confers. The same, sadly, does not yet appear to be true of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. And that is why this expenditure sticks in the craw. They have, so far, at any rate, shown little more than an ill-concealed contempt for the very institution that sustains them. Meghan's extravagant jewelry habit, her eye-wateringly expensive designer wardrobe, her star-studded baby shower, combined with their raft of glitzy celebrity friends. Harry's peevish determination to ignore protocol and play hide-and-seek with Archie's birth details, not to mention their Instagram approach to self-publicity and their overall obsession with controlling their image, all convey a sense that they see traditional royal duty as somehow beneath them. In particular, Meghan's refusal to participate in this month's state visit for Donald Trump, and Harry's petulance around the subject show a distinct preference for putting the personal ahead of the public, a notion the Cambridges simply don't indulge. I have no doubt that, privately, the Duchess of Cambridge was equally ambivalent about meeting Trump, but she nevertheless did so with impeccable grace. Meghan and Harry, by contrast, seem to think themselves above all that tedious protocol, seeking instead to cast themselves as figures on a wider stage. They have just hired a hotshot social media manager to boost their online profile. Of course, there is nothing wrong with wanting to be a celebrity, plenty of people harbor similar ambitions. But you cannot expect to be treated like a member of the royal family when you're behaving, quite frankly, like a Kardashian. The bottom line is that Harry and Meghan are blessed, they have the love and goodwill of the British people, as we saw from their rapt reaction to their engagement and wedding. But if a perception is allowed to grow that they expect all the privilege without any of the responsibility, they risk seriously squandering all that goodwill. For as much as we love and indulge this generation of young, dynamic royals, the fact remains that the kind of admiration and respect the Queen enjoys doesn't come easy. It has to be earned, day in, day out, in the service of those who make all these glittering prizes possible, the British people. I wish Harry and Meghan every happiness in their new home. But the time has come to start taking their privilege seriously.